And we find that if you begin to change your diet, reduce the amount of sugar, reduce the simple carbohydrates and omega-6 fats, increase the omega-3 fats, particularly the DHA component, that the mitochondria begin to function much better and can produce more energy. This reduces the damaging effect of this excitotoxicity and of the inflammation. So proper free feeding of the brain is very important. The next thing that we've learned is that this excitotoxic process can also be changed by our diet. If you're eating a diet that contains a lot of excitotoxin additives like MSG, aspartame, and uh, various other food additives that are known to be excitotoxic, it increases this excitotoxic damage to your brain and makes you much more vulnerable to damage by these excitotoxins and free radicals. We also know that even simple short-term exposure to these excitotoxins can produce inflammation and free radical generation in the brain that can last for very long periods of time, even decades. Most American diets contain a lot of these excitotoxin additives. They can appear as hydrolyzed vegetable protein, soy extract, soy isolate proteins, uh, carrageenan, so it's disguised in many, many names, and we're consuming tons of this every year. So one way to reduce excitotoxicity is to increase our intake of particular nutrients and follow a good diet. Now, the nutrients that are known to reduce excitotoxicity include DHA, pyruvate, mixed B vitamins, CoQ10, alpha-lipoic acid, transferulic acid, transresveratrol, and many of the mitochondrial stimulants uh, such as vitamin K. Now we've also learned that when you do increase the mitochondrial's uh, ability to produce more energy, that reduces excitotoxicity. Uh, what increases the ability of these mitochondria to produce energy includes riboflavin 5-phosphate, uh, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, vitamin K, thiamine, nicotinic acid, peruvic acid, L-carnitine, coenzyme Q10, and alpha-lipoic acid. So you get a dual effect of reducing the excitotoxicity and increasing and protecting your mitochondria. And the increase in the mitochondria's ability to produce energy can be quite substantial. We also know that one of the problems with aging is inflammation. As we grow older, our brains and our bodies become progressively more inflamed. By the time we reach age 75, that inflammation can become quite significant. Inflammation increases free radical generation in the brain. For instance, at age 75, the number of free radicals being generated is 10 times higher than when we're younger and the free radicals in our mitochondria is 15-fold higher than when we're younger. So we see that this can have a profound influence. And as I said, the thing that we know that increases brain inflammation is a high intake of the omega-6 fats. This includes corn oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, soybean oil, and even canola oil. These oils have been shown to not only increase brain inflammation, but increase the risk of such diseases as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. We also know that high calorie diets, that is things that uh, contain a lot of sugar, particularly simple carbohydrates, also increase inflammation of the brain and they're connected to high incidence of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. When you're consuming these things in large amounts, it produces an activation of the brain's immune cells. Uh, these are called microglia. We're now discovering that many of the neurological diseases, even multiple sclerosis, strokes, head trauma, are all related to activation of these microglia. So if you're eating a diet that contains these bad foods, you're increasing microglial activity, free radical degeneration of the brain, and you're setting yourself up for a high risk of developing one of these terrible neurodegenerative disorders. Of concern with inflammation of the brain is obesity. We know that people who are obese have a much higher risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. 
particularly as they get older. And that's because the fat cells and the lymphocytes and the macrophages in the fat cells inside of our abdomen, what's called intra-abdominal fat, produces a very high level of pro-inflammatory cytokines. These are chemicals that produce inflammation. And so when you have a high uh, intra-abdominal fat content, your risk of a number of neurological diseases goes up tremendously. This is a reason to watch your diet as well, so that if you reduce your intake of sugars and uh, high carbohydrate foods, you reduce this inflammation. Now the brain lipid repair formula and the brain repair formula together contain many things that help these various conditions that we've been discussing. For instance, they boost mitochondrial function. They protect the mitochondria. They contain antioxidants. They contain various nutrients that are very powerful anti-inflammatories and reduce inflammation of the brain. And they contain things that improve the membranes of brain cells so that they function better and are more fluid, what we call brain cell fluidity. So we're accomplishing many of the things that we set out to do, including reducing excitotoxicity in the brain. So in combination, by using doses which enhance each other's strength so that we don't have to use very high doses of the various components, we can accomplish the goals that we set out to accomplish and protect the brain. And we feel that based on the scientific literature, if taken over a long period of time in conjunction with a good diet, regular exercise, which includes brain exercises as well as physical exercises, adequate sleep, that you will have a significant reduction in the degeneration of the brain. We thank you and wish you good health.